Hello and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to be talking about 3D printing filaments. Well, actually it's kind of a reintroduction to the whole thing around 3D printing. Now for those of you that have been with the channel for a very long time, you'll know that I've already got an entire series on 3D printing for radio control and it goes through what it is, how it works and takes you through each of the individual steps. Now originally in that series I built this very complicated 3D printer because I didn't have a lot of room on the desk and that has actually gone now. I ran that for about a year and a half and then uh, it's very difficult to get dialed in. You constantly have to recalibrate everything. Uh, they're fantastic for getting large scale prints on a very small scale machine that you can fit on a tabletop. But the, all that messing about was a pain in the butt. And then I got one of these things. Now this is the Mini Fabricator 2. This one came from Hobby King and it sits on my desk pretty much all the time. And I am one of those people that have fallen a little bit in love with 3D printing just because all of those times as a modeler that you come across a problem that you're not sure how to fix, that you'd normally be reaching for a bag of balsa wood, or I was using things like polymorph, which is a heat settable plastic to try and make the little bracket or the little piece that I needed to modify the model, whatever it was I was working on. The cool thing is, with 3D printing, there's a good chance if you go on places like Thingiverse and other areas where people share their models, or if you can play around with things like SketchUp or 123D or those kind of design programs, you can design your own. Now I have literally hundreds of designs on Thingiverse and it's a fraction of what I end up making here. And whenever I bump into a little problem, I'll usually end up designing the little parts in something like SketchUp, uh, which is a very basic program, but works for my classically trained draftsman's brain. And I can very quickly draw something out and have it in my hands, ready to put into the model inside of 20 minutes. But this video is revisiting some of the topics and talking about them in a slightly more up-to-date way. Just because when I did that original series, it was back a couple of years ago now. And although all the information in there is still up-to-date, what I'm finding is people are not really watching it and I'm getting lots of questions. I uh, bumped into two guys in particular that were very big into 3D printing also very big into radio control and hadn't heard of the PETG filament, which is actually brilliant for the hobby. So in this video, what I'm gonna do, I've got some uh, filaments in here that I'm gonna be playing with over the next couple of videos, is just go through the common filament types that you're gonna bump into and also talk about some of the other slightly wacky ones that I've got in here that I currently am playing with and also ask at the end of the video for things and questions that you'd like to know. And then in the subsequent videos, I can make sure that I cover all of those. So the first filament I'm going to talk about is something called PLA. Now PLA is a very brittle, hard, shiny plastic that you tend to get a couple of strands of when you buy your 3D printer just to check that everything is all working. Now the really nice thing about PLA is that it is spectacularly easy to print. You don't need particularly high hot end temperatures. The hot end is the little part of the printer that actually melts the plastic so it can squeeze it out onto the part. You don't need to run that hot end really really hot which is nice and you also don't need a heated bed and the bed is just the part that the 3d part is actually printed on now with some of the plastics that we'll talk about in a moment heated beds are pretty essential but with pla doesn't really care at all what you do is you cover the bed in something like blue painters tape gives a nice surface for it to grab onto and with reasonably low temperatures you can just print away so the benefits with PLA is that it is very easy to print. If you're coming into 3D printing, starting off with PLA will make you feel like a 3D printing hero very quickly. It's easy to get dialed in. It's easy to get really nice prints out of it. And the prints are really pretty. They're quite glossy and very nicely finished if you um, have had the temperatures right. The challenge with PLA in radio control is that it is brittle. So if you overstress it, it will just crack and delaminate and come apart. And for things like little brackets for cameras, if you put any kind of stress on it, then you'll find that the, uh, the corners will just break off and the part will be completely useless. So PLA is very good for printing daft things like this. So this is... Um, one of my Rick badges from Rick and Morty. PLA is fantastic for things like that. It makes a nice rigid part. If there's enough material, then it isn't going to get snapped off. The next filament that you'll come across that people will talk about is ABS. 
Now, ABS is fantastically durable. In fact, a lot of the propellers that we use in the hobby, particularly for smaller multi-rotors, are actually made from ABS. And you'll know when they're made of ABS, because if you have a crash, you'll notice that the ABS actually goes like a white color when it's been stressed too much. And that's the great thing about ABS. When you put energy into it, it will deform and try and absorb that energy. It will flex slightly. You can overstress it, and that's when you get those white kind of stress marks. That's usually mean that you need to replace the rotor. But ABS is something that we can print with as well. The challenge with ABS is that it needs quite high hot end temperatures and it also needs a heated bed as well. The problem with ABS is that as it cools down, it actually shrinks slightly. So as you're printing the part, as that those layers start to cool down, the layers on the top start pulling the bottom layers up and you get the part lifting off the base. So what you have to do is you have to have the hot bed on and the idea is, is that that heat stops the part cooling unevenly so that you don't get that part pulling off the bed. So printing with ABS can be a real pain in the butt and it's something that I struggle with. So what I've gone on to use is something called PETG. Now PETG is this kind of stuff. Uh, this is actually what it looks like. Uh, this is the stuff from Hobby King. All the filaments I'll talk about, I'll put links uh, in the description if you're interested. Uh, you can get them from loads of places. It just happens that I, I did an order for Hobby King and got some filaments in to do these videos with. PETG is the best of both worlds. It's pretty easy to print. You print it at a slightly hotter temperature. The hot end is slightly warmer than PLA, but not by a huge amount. And you don't need lots of heat in a heated bed. Having the bed warm actually helps it adhere. But once you're into printing, you don't have that problem where as it cools down, it shrinks and pulls itself off the bed. So you get a really strong part that's slightly flexible, so you can make lots of 3D printable stuff out of it that's perfect for radio control, and most printers will handle it. And I print pretty much exclusively in PETG these days just to get everything working. Because with PETG, I know I'll get a pretty solid print every time. The results are really nice, and I know that it'll also take the knocks that it's going to get when I put it into a radio control model. Last one that you'll probably hear about is flexible filament. I have some flexible filament here as well. Uh, we'll be playing with the flexible filament. I want to see um, how we can get that working on things like the Mini Fabricator 2. There are some tricks that you need to use. If you've never watched things like Maker's Muse, uh, that's a fantastic channel that talks about 3D printing. He did a video a while ago talking about some of the tricks to get TPU flexible filament printing well on these kind of printers. I'm going to have a go with that and uh, we'll talk about it specifically with respect to radio control. But the really cool thing about flexible filament is perfect for making things like camera enclosures, for GoPro mounts and those kind of things as well. And I'm also interested in using it to print vibration isolating pads for things like the underneath of motors, which will be perfect for these bigger builds. Because if you remember, we talked a while ago about building bigger quadcopters. And one of the things that they talked about was actually using neoprene pads under the motors as vibration isolation. Uh, but I quite like the idea of actually designing and printing pads from TPU or flexible filament that's gonna work. The reason flexible filament is so tricky to print is that, of course, when you feed it into the hot end, rather than it being quite a stiff rod of plastic that as you feed it in just gets melted and squidges out the bottom, as you feed the filament in, because it's flexible, then if there's any kind of resistance or blockage in the nozzle, then the pressure that you're applying isn't going to force the plastic out and you can have lots of weirdness as well. So you usually need to over extrude, you need to turn off retraction, some of those other bits and pieces. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you. I've also got some other weird and wacky stuff in here as well. Uh, this is called glass bend. I've always had this idea of printing pieces that are almost clear and I tried it with clear ABS in the past and when it was printed it just looked like white plastic because of all the little bubbles and air gaps in the actual 3D print itself so it didn't look clear at all. Apparently glass bend sorts that out so I've also got some of that in too. 
So for 3D printing for radio control, I would say unless you are very comfortable printing with ABS, I would usually go with PETG. But if you have any specific questions about 3D printing that you want to know more about, then please pop a comment down below. And in the next three or four videos in this update to the 3D printing for radio control series, I'll try and cover them as best I can. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.